Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic and Extra Rule Maths video. In this video we're taking a look at how we might go about deriving the Maclaurin series expansion for sine x. And we've also got here, recall what the Maclaurin series, the general one is, we, re, uh, we actually derived this previously, f of x is equal to all of this. Uh, f of 0 plus the derivative evaluated at 0 times x plus the second derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 2 factorial times x squared and so on and so, on, so forth. And this goes on infinitely. You have to have an infinite number of terms uh, for this identity uh, sign here to actually hold, okay? Otherwise, it's only an approximation. And to be fair, that is when we technically, uh, we tend to use it as an approximation. And we'll see that in uh, future videos. So what does this actually mean? We want to find the Maclaurin series for sine x. What, what, what does that actually mean, though? All it means is that we want to write the function sine x. So we know what sine x does. It's a wave makes a wave shape we, we want to essentially express that exact wave but not as just like a sine x but actually as a series of powers of x a, a big sum a big infinite polynomial we call it a power series so a something plus a something times x plus a something times uh, x squared plus a something times x cubed plus a something times x to the four and so on in, with an infinite number of terms and it's true that we can actually do this so we simply use the formula so of course we're doing this for sine x which means we want our f of x this is how we begin um, we want to essentially say that f of x is sine x and we simply use that formula that we actually derived uh, in the previous video uh, above we simply use this so the first thing that we need to do um, is, uh, and you can do this in a few orders, but the first thing that I like to do is to uh, find all of the derivatives, or not all of them, but uh, you know the first few, right? Um, and we should be able to see a pattern emerging. So the second, so the first derivative of f of x, which is sine x, when we differentiate sine x, we get cos x. So we get cos x. Okay, and we can differentiate cos x to find the second derivative, um, and cos x differentiates to minus sine x just like this uh, we can then take the third derivative here by differentiating the minus sine x sine x differentiates to cos x so minus sine x differentiates to minus cos x so we get a minus cos x here we can take the fourth derivative and uh, minus cos x differentiates to positive sine x and we can essentially keep doing this pattern. Notice how you can you can hopefully clearly see here that we've just gone in a big circle, right? We started with a sine x, we're back to a sine x. Um, and that is actually something that uh, sine and cosine have. They do have this like sort of cycle of derivatives. So, you know, just for the sake of uh, demonstration, if we were to take the fifth derivative like this, we would find that this is equal to cos x again. And again, it just goes and goes and goes. So then what we can do is we can evaluate all of these functions, all of these different derivatives at zero. So f of zero, that means sine of zero. Sine of zero is just zero. And one thing that we need to be very careful of here um, is that when we use Maclaurin series for angles, so the trigonometric things, um, the angle x always needs to be in radians, okay? It always needs to be in radians for this to work. But we're not, we're not going to have a problem right now because uh, f of 0 is just going to be the same in radians or degrees because 0 radians are the same as 0 degrees. Okay, the, second, the first derivative evaluated at 0 is equal to cos of 0. Cos of 0 is equal to 1. We can then keep doing this. We get the second derivative. That's, sin, that's basically negative sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to be 0 as well. The third derivative evaluated at 0. Cos of 0 is 1, so this is going to be minus 1. The fourth derivative evaluated at 0 is going to be 0 again, because that's just sine x. The fifth derivative evaluated at 0 is going to be 1. And you can, you can clearly see here there's a pattern, right? So it goes 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 
and so on just like that that's the pattern it's going to keep doing that forever so now that we have all of these derivatives we can plug into the formula so here's the formula um, f of x is f of zero plus blah blah blah, blah. we simply plug this in so um, how shall we do this i want to kind of keep it on the screen i'll zoom out a little bit we'll do it over here now so we're going to come over here i want to just keep that on the screen so you can see it so f of x f of x is sine x so we're going to replace f of x with sine x sine x and that is going to be identical to f of zero f of zero is zero we can see that right there so it's going to be zero plus okay the derivative of a to zero we already said that that's equal to one but then it's times x so it's plus one times x which is x okay plus the second derivative of a to the zero that's zero again okay so zero over two factorial times x squared okay of course that just ends up being zero so i'll move over here slightly so we have a little bit more space uh, and i will zoom in a little bit just to make things a bit bigger okay the next term uh, we can say that is going to be the uh, the third derivative um, evaluated at zero the third derivative we can see down here uh, this one here that's minus one so plus minus one over three factorial times x cubed the next term is going to be the we have, i haven't written it down but the fourth derivative of a to the zero divided by four factorial times x to the four so the fourth derivative is zero so it's going to be plus zero over four factorial x to the four the next one is the fifth derivative evaluated at zero divided by five factorial times x to the five so that's going to be the fifth derivative evaluated at zero is one so this is going to be plus one over five factorial x to the power of five and so on and so forth forever right it just goes on and on and on so we should be able to see another pattern emerging what does this actually look like if we simplify this down a little bit um, and we get rid of all of those zeros and stuff like that we end up with sine x equals well zero plus x but that's just going to be x zero over x zero uh, x squared over two factorial that's going to be zero minus one over three factorial x to the three we'll just write that as minus x to the three over three factorial let's not even worry about um, simplifying the factorials let's just leave them as factorials i think it's easier um, to see the pattern okay well zero over four factorial times x to the four that's also just going to be zero so we won't write it the next term you can see here is we have one over five factorial x to the five so we're going to add that plus one over five factorial times x to the five or actually i'll write the x to the five on top like with the other one so x to the five over five factorial and of course we could keep doing this and doing it and doing it and there's actually a pattern here because this x is actually like an x to the one isn't it of course x to the one is x so actually what we get here is we get x to the one and also one factorial is equal to one so we could kind of say this is over one factorial if we like and actually if i write it like that you can see a pattern here these factorials are all the they're just the odd numbers aren't they one three five and actually you could keep doing this we won't do it for the sake of time but you could keep doing this and the next time you would get is a seven then a nine then an eleven and so on and so it's just the odd numbers and actually the powers are the odd numbers too one three five etc so actually it's just all of the odd numbers being times with their odd factorials on the bottom um, and the the only exception the only other thing is we have to alternate between minuses and pluses minus plus minus plus so on so if we want to actually write out this whole uh, series i'm telling you and you can do this for yourself if you like if you want more time but the next term would be minus x to the seven over seven factorial the next term would be plus x to the nine over nine factorial then minus x to the 11 over 11 factorial plus x to the power of 13 over 13 factorial and so on i hope that the pattern is clear at this point and of course we need to go on forever this never ends at the moment it's only an approximation it would be a very good approximation with this many terms but it is only an approximation in order for this uh, big sequence of x's 
of this big sum of x's to actually be equal to sine x, we must have an infinite number of terms here. Hence the plus dot, 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 dot. And at that point, we can also say these things are identical. And the, again, the only thing is x must be in radians, okay? It's not going to work in degrees. It only works in radians. Just like all of calculus, only use radians ever. Never. This is, this is calculus, it's differentiation. If you uh, are doing any calculus with any integration differentiation, you, you know you only use radians, and this is no exception. So this is essentially the Maclaurin series uh, for sine of x, okay? This is how you get it. It's very helpful for proving lots of things. We'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, we'll do cos as well at some point and uh, e to the x and stuff like that. But that is it. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video uh, as much as I did even. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.